Hey everybody, welcome to Goots' Wrestling Pod. I'm your host, Ray Goots. I'm here with the man of the hour, Andrew Lee, the big oos. Big oos, were you excited when the little oos, Jey Uso, won the belt last night? The IC title? No, I don't think he should win the title. I don't I don't I don't think Jey Uso's got the juice. He got well, the he's juice. over. He's over with the kids. You gotta give him yeah. something. Yeah, he got the juice. He got the juice. What about you? How do you you get you go gaga? I mean, I I I got Homer, I didn't even watch it. But uh yeah, I, I why not? Like it's like why not give him a little like why not give him a little bit of a shot? You know, more people like like let him have it for a few weeks. I have there I have full confidence that Braun Breaker is gonna win the world title and hold it for a long fucking time. It doesn't have to be today. And Jay Uso is now 200 years old. And this is the time to if you're gonna strike with him, strike now. Um fair point. Fair point. It does it to me, it like it does like give him like give him a shot. It's not gonna hurt the show. Now, if he beat Cody or if he beat Gunther, I'd be a little bit more like, eh. But what is this gonna do? I mean, and Braun Breaker could beat him again, win the title back at any time. It's not gonna affect either one of them. You yeah, know, so exactly true. yeah. And Braun's young. He could take, you know, he like he said he's got plenty of time. Uh, but so also, soon. yeah, if they do reunite the bloodline and Jey Uso's the one with the belt and Roman has no belt, that could be a very interesting dynamic. Yeah. Like he that wants Jay to Uso's the champ, yeah. and Roman's not a champ. Yeah, because... he might be like, I want to take the lead, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, that, that I'm telling you, like, I, I also think he won the belt because they're going to incorporate that. And all roads, and I hope I'm right about this, all roads have leaned to rock Roman in Vegas, including Jay Uso winning the belt last night. And it's going to be epic, Big Uso. The Ooses are going to collide, and you I'm think ready. Jay's going to hold the belt till like April? That's no, I know. But I think whenever he loses it, it's going to be part of the storyline in the stack. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I think I think that this is part of the storyline. This is the whole lose. big storyline coming together. He's going to lose it to his uh, wife, Naomi. You know, no, that's Jimmy Uso. Oh, really? Dude, that's racist. Don't fucking mix those two together, bro. Listen, Oos. Hey, hey, um, so we're recording this on Tuesday, the 24th. Still no TV deal. Still no TV deal announced. No, Where's the TV September deal? 24th. They keep hinting. Oh, I heard I heard big things. I heard they're gonna I heard they actually gonna get. I don't know if you read this. Did you read this? They're gonna get what? 200 million for six years. Uh for five years, really, six years are optional, by the way. Every every week it's gonna go up. Every week this is gonna go up. I heard I heard that they uh they're they're gonna they're gonna the budget for the authority movie they're just gonna give to AEW because no one's gonna go see it anyway. So I do think by the way, re- if there was a choice between making the authority film or re-signing AEW, I would re-sign AEW over making the authority film. You know that's the next movie they're supposed to make. I heard, I don't know if you heard this, but yeah, they're okay. gonna get 600 million for 10 years, 11th mm-hmm. years optional. And David Zasloff, the CEO, is personally going to give Tony Khan a hand job personally <laughs> every year. Every year, <laughs> I heard. Year. Uh, <laughs> look, here's the deal. Here's the deal, Andrew, you bro. All right. Um, still no TV deal. All, all I hear is things from <laughs> Dave Meltzer. And why is this not? If this is so good, if they're getting everything they want, why is it not announced? And then I said this to you off camera. They hired a TV actor to play Hal Jordan, probably one of the most important DC characters in the world. I don't care what you say. If you're going to revamp the DC universe, Hal Jordan has to have a pivotal role. If you're not getting a pivotal role, you've already made a few mistakes. But the guy doesn't have to be in any of the movies. And the reason they signed him was... uh, they signed them because they're running out of money. Deep and Warner Brothers is running out of money. And this is the they best are. actor they could get for Hal Jordan. So my thing is this. You can't afford a good actor for Hal Jordan. How, where is the money coming from that you're going to give Tony Khan to have fucking Orange Cassidy fight Evil Uno? You know? Well, they're going to lose even more money because they lost the NBA. Yeah. You know? And their ad revenue is going to go down. I mean, granted, they don't have to pay. Um, I guess like the end and the NBA, so they don't they don't like like you know that they're they're keeping that money they would have lost giving paying for it, but they're not also gonna be making out ad money. So WB is in trouble. That's why they keep slashing everything, right? They keep cutting everything. Yeah, but know? apparently not Tony Khan. Apparently Tony Khan they can't 
They can't wait to give him all the money in the world. They keep finding money for Tony Khan. They're like, listen, we got to cancel the new Batman movie. We got to cancel the Aquaman movie. No more Looney Tune cartoons. But I found an extra billion for Tony Khan. Uh, what were the ratings on Saturday? Four people watched Evil. By the way, they did have an Evil Uno match where he fought like someone like big. Did you see that? You know, my he joke fought. is he fought. He, go look it up. Look at the collision results. Look it up. It was really funny who he fought. And it, I, apparently it was a back and forth match. Apparently, I, I don't I, I remember you say every week, like, they're going to sign Roman Reigns, going to fight Evil Uno by week three. They literally did that with someone. Look up who Evil Uno fought on Saturday. Hold on. Andrew Darby is looking Allen? Yeah, he fought Darby Allen in a back and forth match. This oh, fucking guy has got a major team. match. Man, I might be like one of the few Evil Uno fans. I like Evil Uno a lot. He's got a good, um, he's okay. got a good finisher. Listen, it's, and what we're seeing, you know, we'll go back to 95 a little bit. We're seeing, like, everyone thought Mabel was a fucking loser, right? And now Vince is doing all he can to convince the fan base he's not a fucking loser. Didn't work. But Vince tried. If you try with Evil Uno, that's fine. But to have Evil Uno disappear for, like, uh, four months, and then he shows up and has a back and forth match with a major star, that's not doing anything for anyone. No, but like if you right. want to build it's up true. Evil Uno as a badass or like as like a guy who can like deliver, that's fine. But you have to commit to him every fucking week. He can't be sitting in the back eating fucking Brussels sprouts and chocolate chip cookies for Brussels. fucking six months. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair. I mean, assessment. you know, I mean, he should be on. If you're gonna build it, have him on TV instead of you know Taco Mitsubishi. And all the other guys he drags out from New Japan that nobody really cares about. Rumor has it that David Zasloff, CEO of Warner Brothers Discovery, saw that Evil Uno Darby Allen match. So now the offer has been upped to six hundred million a year for twenty years, twenty first year optional. And he is personally going to give both Tony Khan and his father Shad Khan uh, hand jobs every year, once a year. Right? By the way, to see the NFL fans both returning, hands time, both hands at a time, both hands at a time. Did you see Evil Uno, the Evil Uno? Did you see the NFL fans are turning on Tony Khan because the Jaguars literally had like one of the worst games? Wait, are the and... NFL fans actually turning on Tony Khan? Yeah, they're like this guy sat around the draft. Room. Apparently, he drafted a, a fucking lemon. He drafted a fucking loser, right? Who hasn't done anything? And if you saw the, did you see the little documentary they made for him where he he walks out the neck brace during draft day and he puts out like this fucking plastics like it's like a menu at fucking ihop and he's like this is my uh sheet everyone else has a laptop and he has like a sheet like it's so fucking bad bro and this was yeah, nfl I mean, films film this yeah and people I mean, are like people like this fucking guy spent draft day selling a shitty wrestling angle and he did a horrible job drafting team and now the team is like doing really bad and here's the deal play, here's a devil let me play devil's advocate about this though the Jaguars were not never ever a good team. They do. They've had a losing season for the past three years. Yeah, and he's been the owner the entire time. You're supposed to turn yeah. that around. I mean, but that's that's not that's not AEW. That's not the fault of AEW. That's Shad Khan's fault. Why is his son in fucking like if exactly. I was Shad, I would be like, listen, you have AEW. I'm gonna take you away from the Jaguars now because I need to make some serious money with this team. And I would be like, go do your play thing. This is where Daddy needs to work. That's what I would do. That's Shad's, like, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, look, now. if you're a f – look, I know, bro, there are some fucking hardcore Steeler fans. I'm, I don't give a fuck about sports. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit the Giants explode tonight, right? I don't give a fuck, right? <laughs> but there are people who do give a fuck. Like, this is a serious thing for them. And if the fucking owner of the, of the fucking Steelers walked out with a neck brace because he got beat up by Evil Uno – and uh, was fucking playing, and then they drafted one of the worst players, and they're losing. Dude, people would be trying to kill this guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, people would be like, "I'm gonna go find this guy and beat the shit out of him." Like, it's not, ha ha. Like, the football serious business, and he's the failure in everything he touches. I'm sorry, he just is. If you want to know how bad the Jaguars are in 2020, okay, mm -hmm. okay, I could, I'll go backwards. Last year, 2023. They were nine and eight. They didn't make the playoffs. 2022, they were nine and eight. They didn't make the playoffs. Okay. 2021, yeah. they were three and 14. Three, they won three games. 
they lost. Sounds great to me. Yeah, that's 2021. 2020, they won one game. They lost 15 games. They're never. They're not a winning team. They've been a. They've been a shitty team since 2020. I know, but this was the year to turn it around. They had the draft pick, and Tony Khan played the fucking angle and drafted a fucking loser. So. Uh, okay, that's fair, but I mean, that's I I wouldn't even blame that on AEW. I would just be like, Shad, what are you doing? You gave your son a. Whole I, I mean, I I blame all this on Shad. I I think yeah, he should lock his son up. Yeah, yeah. He should lock his son up in a cave because look, here's the deal. We yeah. say that all this shit doesn't matter, but losing NFL games does matter. It can have an effect. There, there's it's different when you when you run your NFL team into the ground. That is a different effect. It's it's you know you can you can be Billy Corgan, you can be Tony Khan because none of this matters. You know if Tony Khan doesn't if Tony Khan just runs this show on fucking YouTube for the rest of his life, it doesn't really matter. But NFL kind of matters to people. So you know what I can see how and I know it matters to Shad. It matters to yeah. Shad because Shad when he came to you know why he bought an NFL team right to begin with. Why is that? When he first came to America. He made friends with people and they introduced him to football and he learned that this was like an American thing and he got really into it. And he was like his goal to be really like it became like his sport. Like he was like, you know what? I want to like I want to get involved in like football. And that's why he bought this football team and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I can. So I could. So with the rumors of him being pissed off that his team sucks balls is probably true. I, I you know what I can picture? I can picture Shad being so mad at Tony Khan that he punishes him by maybe so. putting a fucking cap, a sal- like a money cap on AEW or something like that, right? I mean, he should have done it. He should have done it a while ago. The other yeah, thing, he should have done it a while ago. He should have, but he did it. Yeah. The other thing that's embarrassing about AEW, the other thing, I, I, you know, they haven't sold any tickets. And dude, they announced, I think I sent this to you, Hangman Page, Jeff Jarrett. Bro, like, what are you doing? No, what are you I wish. They sold what? tickets for him. for a grand yeah, slam. They, they sold tickets. They sold like four or five thousand. They sold twenty thousand four years ago. Man, they sold twenty thousand. Oh, that was four years ago. It's twenty thousand. That like was during the pandemic too. We were still dying. You were fucking walking, running around with a mask like you were sub zero. Like and people showed up. Now there's no now no COVID's fake. We cured it. Gino Bisconti cured COVID, and now people aren't coming to AEW shows. <laughs> By the way. So Grand Slam, um, mm-hmm. it is this Wednesday, tomorrow actually. Tomorrow, um, we're, we're recording this on a Tuesday. It is set up for seven thousand tickets, seven thousand yeah. seats, seven thousand seats. How many is he sold as of right now? They have uh, already distributed over six thousand, so they're probably going to have a sellout. Last I mean, year, I mean, it, last year Grand I, Slam, I, I was I was offered tickets to go, but I'm doing Philly Punchline. I'm doing an actual show tomorrow. Oh, oh, um, last year, uh, they had um, a, le- oh, a little over 11,000, right? Dude, every year they go down, they go down a little bit more. Yeah. That's bad. 2022 That's was 13, um, 2022 was uh, 13, a little 13,800. And what and was 2020? 2021 was. Um, I mean, it's a different time and everything. Uh, Twenty thousand. So, yeah. Come on, dude. Every year, it's, significant. it's a different time. What are you talking about, dude? Fucking. I had I, I had I had tattoos, but it wasn't alone because I had two tattoos. A woman said she liked my tattoos. I wish you had gone to that one, bro, because I think you would have been really like impressed. I know you believe in Tony Khan more than I do, but like, you know, looking back, it really, you know, it's like, you know, like, dude, they. Man, it, dude, you look back like you, you like sometimes like Conrad and Bischoff will be talking about like the Nitros from '99, and even '99 was supposed to be one of their worst years. They're frequently drawing like 40,000 people to domes on Nitros, and this fucking guy, um, you know, it's like, oh uh, man, he really, he really had a chance to make a difference, like Fatu in 1995, but he didn't. Makes like. like but the, the Tony Khan needs to hire Brikishi and put him under Fatu. I need you to make a difference. Dude, dude, Grand Slam, Grand Slam 2025 selling out, brother. Selling out, brother. But yeah, that's kind of sad. They went from they went from uh 20,000 the first year to uh 13,000, so 7,000 that was a 7,000 drop. And then mm-hmm. in 2021 they went to 11,000, so that 
that dropped dropped about uh what is that? They dropped about like two thousand, right? Mm-hmm. And now they're going to at most they're gonna sell a seven thousand. So that's a uh, another four thousand drop. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I feel like tickets are gonna go down in price tomorrow, day of, and I feel like some people are waiting for that. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Like, so they're gonna sell out. I guarantee they're gonna they're gonna. But that's sell not a sell. That's like a sell. That's like a dude. If I go to New York Comic Club and be like, "All right, I just want to sell fifteen seats," and I sell them out, I didn't sell it out. Technically, yeah. I'm like Emilio. I'm buying on fifteen. I got fifteen, so I sold it out. Emilio. Oh my god. That'd yeah, be yeah, great to be done. Can I have one hundred seventy million? That's the argument he's gonna make. That's the argument he he is going to definitely make. That he was uh, a also tomorrow. Tomorrow's a big day. It's a big day. I'll be a punk Philly punchline. I mean, you'll be uh, you'll be Andrew Leeing it all over Jersey, and um, Tony Khan will be in fucking Queens. And the McMahon documentary comes out. Vince McMahon has put out a statement. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, Vince McMahon. I'm sure Dave Meltzer will be like, you know, when the ratings down, everyone's watching the McMahon documentary. That's why the ratings were down. Um, uh, did you see McMahon's statement that he disavows the documentary? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Well, what else is he gonna say? Of course, he's gonna say that. Well, the thing about it is that they said the documentary is not even that bad. Although he does admit that he thinks about sex constantly, and he like laughs up Royce and they bring up the angle that he pitched where he was fucking Steph and got her pregnant. And, I mean, I don't know what I don't know. I, I really, I really wish. You know what I wish? I wish there was like I wish he revealed what Macho Man did. That should be the whole documentary. Just what did Macho Man do? What if How Ajumin? excited are you to see this documentary? I'm not really that. I'm not that excited. I don't think it's. I don't think it's going to be as crazy as people think it's going to be. Um, You're not excited to see that? No, because I think like I don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to deliver what Vince McMahon thinks it's going to deliver. Hmm. Like I don't know. I because I feel like because they have Raw coming. I think they're going to hit a little hard, but not that hard because they don't want to jeopardize this partnership with WWE. And also, if they like reveal that Vince was like raping fucking puppies at, at Petco, people are going to be like, well, then why do you have Raw showing up on, on in January? Like they want people to watch Raw. So I think it's going to be a little bit. And I think you're going to get some Tony Atlas reveals that Pat Patterson raped him. But what I'm saying is it's going to be like all things about people who died and people that like Triple H or or fucking, I don't know, Stephanie can be like, oh, that person's long gone and everything's great yeah. now. Like, it's gonna be I like think if someone said on camera, let's say they got like, and again, this is, I'm just making shit up here. Maria goes on camera, Triple H rate me 70, 72 times. They're not going to put that in the documentary. You know what I mean? They're yeah. just not because that's going to hurt Triple H and, you know, he's going to want to come out in the first Raw and be like, we're on Netflix, I did it. I'm the game. Uh. So they're not going to do that. <laughs> You know, the same thing. Like if some again, I'll play I'll play all the sides. If some other woman, let's say fucking, you know, Mickey James is like, I have proof that uh, CM Punk slept with my cat. They're not gonna fucking put that out because they want CM Punk to come out. Well, the voice, the voices, they're not gonna do that. They're not gonna put that out there, you know? Yeah. I mean, are you excited? Yeah. I do wanna see it. How do you not <laughs> wanna see this? I wanna see it. I mean, back. also I don't have Netflix here. I have to wait till I go to California next week to see it. So oh. But I'm feeling like the craziest parts will be on fucking Twitter and Facebook. Oh, yeah, absolutely, dude. I like think if Vince Man be... says, Vince Man admits that him and Macho Man tag team Linda, they'll, that'll be on fucking. Yeah. I'm actually, that's like the, I don't watch Netflix at all, but um, that's the one thing I'm actually looking forward to seeing. I want to well, like tune in every week for that thing. You, no, it's going to be all at once, bro. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, that's even better. Yeah. So you get, that's, that's what you get to do. All right. Enough about Vince McMahon. Let's talk about the only booker that matters, Eric Bischoff. Eric, we're talking dude. Great American Bash 1995. Um, overall, Andrew, uh, I, this this show had a lot better matches than the last show. I did find it a little struggle, struggle to get through. What did you feel about this thing? I liked it. This is uh, Eric Bischoff. I was, I was like, like, what was his nickname? It's Easy E, wasn't it? Easy it was E, easy, brother. Easy E, yeah. And let me tell you. You know what was easy watching the show? I thought it was kind of pretty easy to watch the show. It really? Bad. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. I mean, it, it had some. All. Listen, it had it had some great matches, but yeah. my thing with WCW and the thing I get from these pay per views is, and maybe I'm spoiled because WWE and AEW are better at this now. AEW and WWE modern papers like this is a big deal. Like this is a big deal of a show, and I really do feel like, and I feel this way about WWF shows. We're just doing this because we have to do it. 
but we're not. I don't know. Like, there's some moments where it's like, again, there's some matches here that just feel like we need to fill up time. And I don't know why that takes me out of it, you know? Um, I mean, for me, I don't think that, I mean, it does, why does it bother you? Because it's because I just feel like these guys are going through the motions. They're not trying. They just think the fact that they're in the ring is a change. I'll take you a perfect example. Harlem Heat versus the two fucking white racists or whatever their names are. Um, that just felt like we, we don't have to do anything interesting. It should just be interesting that we're here. And also, I felt like they added that match because it was a bonus match because they had time to kill. And they're like, let these four idiots go out there. And I don't know. I didn't. I, that was the... I don't like that. It's just like they're not trying to have a good yeah, match. Why did that team. bother you so much? As because long as the match it, is good, who cares? But it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, the Harlem Heat match wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It wasn't good. Uh, All right, let's talk about the show because the show does start off really well. So let's yeah, talk. let's let's let, let's talk. Let's talk the metadata. Let's first. talk Turkey, yeah. brother. Yeah, Great American Bash, nineteen ninety five, backed by popular demand. Celebrate with some red, white, and Black and blue. Get it, guys? Boom, boom, boom. Beating up. Uh, takes mm -hmm. place June 18th, 1995. The reason why they say backed by popular demand, the last Great American Bash was 1992. So this is like, um, what is that? Three-year uh, three year gap since they did it. Why did they decide to, like, well, let's just come back and do this? Why did they... I don't know why they got rid of... I think they wanted to replace the branding with um, uh, Beach Blast and then they changed the bash at the beach and then I think when it was time to like add more shows they were like let's just bring back Great American uh, Bash I don't know why I would never would have gotten rid of this name because it's a you know you have to it's like getting rid of SummerSlam for three years randomly why would you do that everyone likes it to they, had, they felt like they had too many pay-per-views with the word bash in it right they all uh, every WCW pay-per-view shows the Halloween Bash Starcade Bash <laughs> also has been called Super yeah, Bash the Slambury Bash, uh, yeah. Starkey Bash, yeah. Um, you know it's funny they like they like they didn't like the name Great American Bash, but like when after Junior bought WCW, the one of the, the first ones that he brought he started using was Great American Bash. Remember that? It's a great name. It's it's it a great name. like yeah. it to me. Starcade's a great name. Um, Halloween yeah, Havoc oh, is a for wrestling. I like I like Starcade. It, to me, it sounds super dated. You're super deep, bro. Um, fucking uh, um, uh, Halloween Havoc is a great name. Super Brawl. The ones I think are shitty names are World War Three. That fucking stinks. That's a stupid yeah. name. That's um, Uncensored is not a good name. Sold Out is not a good name. Uh, what else? Is that um, it? Bash the Beach I don't like. I, that sounds stupid. I could take or leave that. I like Beach Blast a little bit better. Um... March. Oh, Spring Stampede, Slambery, I can take or leave. But fucking so, yeah. Halloween Havoc. Dude, they should, WC, WWE should should drop the October should they, every 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 October paper should be called Halloween Havoc, like for the main roster. They well, should, they use it for NXT, which I like, though. I yeah, but like I would rather it be like on Halloween night, whatever the day is, they have a big pay-per-view, and that should be, that should, that should be like the fifth big pay-per-view, Halloween Havoc. Yeah, but they shouldn't do it on Halloween because they'll. It's not gonna. Sorry, maybe the Sunday time. before or something. Like yeah, but I, dude, I do like that they actually use it instead of not using it at all, right? Yeah, well, I mean, like, I mean, Triple H wanted to use Triple H wanted to use Great American Bash, Halloween Havoc, War Games. As soon as they got everything, and Vince said no. Triple H pitched somebody. Triple H pitched, pitched um, and we talked about this, uh, doing finishing off the Alliance Strong and War Games. And if they had done that, that would have been fucking huge. If they had done that in 2001. Yeah, that would have been huge. Yeah, that, was, that just shows you how stupid uh, Junior is, you know? I think that could have saved that could have saved the WCW brand. Like, that could have saved the Alliance angle, doing a War Games match. If you do Rob Van Dam, Booker T, DDP, um, fucking, uh, I'm just going to throw a name out here, uh, Sean O'Hare, and he tees a fifth person. And then the team WWF is like fuck it, Stone Cold, The Rock, Kurt Angle. Um, wait, who would wait, uh, who who would you have picked on WCW? 
So WCW side, well, because it's it's the alliance, right? Rob yeah, Van Dam, yeah. Booker T, Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, wait, Rhino, not Sean O'Hare. And then you say a mysterious, you say there's a mysterious Dude, I was gonna say, When you said Sean O'Hare, Sean O'Hare, I was like, uh, come on, bro. Like, I uh, like And then on WWF team. side, you do Austin. No, Austin was with, well, let's just say he doesn't join the alliance. You do yeah, Austin. He should have never joined the alliance. Kurt Angle, Undertaker, Rock, and Kane, right? Those are the five. And then the mysterious person is Sting oh my, or Goldberg. Oh, my God. Like, that's the fifth person. And then WCW wins the match. Like, Goldberg fucking spears Kane through the yeah. fucking – or Sting. Sting does – Sting makes Kane submit, and then the Alliance wins the match, and then Raw becomes Nitro because of Sting. Dude, what have been fucking huge? But no, no. No, no yeah, see? But, dude, this is what I'm saying. This is why I think – a couple of weeks ago, Joe Hendry from TNA should have won the NXT title because it would have made. It's not going to make NXT look weaker. It's just going to make it I think, more. I think they're good. I, I think they're waiting to give a TNA guy a significant belt on the CW. Yeah, probably when they debut. Yeah, because they also <laughs> teased that Joe Hendry might not be done. Like Shawn Michaels was like, whenever you want to come back, you know. Yeah, so, and I and if I was TNA, I would rather Jordan Grace or Joe Hendry get belts in the CW because more people are going to see it. Yeah, exactly. And I then you can so. use that to help your company. Unlike you know, unlike unlike Tony Khan, who went on fucking dude went on. I can't believe Scott Demore approved those fucking promos. Yeah. Can you imagine if they had Triple H walking out every week on TNA and being like, "This company sucks. It was better when AJ Styles was here." <laughs> dude, you know if they. On the debut of CW, if if one of the if somebody from TNA wins one of the women's world or the men's world title, and then they start a whole invasion angle on the first episode, dude, mm-hmm. forget about it. Yeah, Grand Slam, AEW Grand Slam selling out, twenty twenty five selling out. All anyway. right, so listen, let's talk about this. We got the Great American Bash, Daddy. Yeah, let's go back to this. All right, so Great American Bash ninety five takes place in Dayton, Ohio. Six thousand people. Are in attendance, so it's actually less than Grand Slam, and hundred thousand pay per view buys. Uh, in comparison, Slam Buri the right before had a hundred and uh, ten thousand buys. They got uh, more because the Hulkster bump, brother. Yeah, the Hulkster bump. Yep. Uh, so opening, yes, yeah, right. Hulkster will not be on Great American Bash, so it's ten thousand less. You're right. The Hulkster. Yeah, bump. He's got a, He's got a few. He's probably bring, filming some shitty movie. He brings exactly ten thousand people. Um, and you know what? The opening graphic goes over all the big matches of the card, which I do enjoy. Tony Schiavone's back, and with Bobby the Brain Heenan on commentary. And when they're talking, you can see Tony Schiavone kind of move very stiffly, like because he, he had the neck surgery at the last pay per view. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Owen Hart um, dropped from his head between shows. So. Exactly, Owen Hart. That's stupid, Owen Hart. Breaking everybody's next match number one. Guess who else is back? Not just Tony Schiavone, Brian Pillman, um, the Flying Brian. He is back. And he's in the opening match against Alex Wright. Um, you, I don't know if he's caught this, but in this match, you see a fan in the front row had a sign that said, Al Snow will bash you. You see that? No, I didn't see it. Good catch. Yeah. yeah he, so Al Snow is uh, over, even in WCW at this point. Listen to me, Al Snow's the legend of legends. You know, Legend, yeah. Lots of head scissors by both guys in the beginning, but Alex uh, Wright, he messes up a surfboard. Oh, here we go. This is when the bat I popped. Here we go. Tell me what happens. Okay. So he I don't when you were watching this, it's not a bad match, but you can see because because he's in there with Brian Pillman, he's Alex Wright is greener. He's hundred percent. He can't hang. He can't hang with Brian Pillman. He can't hang. He everything just looks like less natural, right? And Mm You see, you can catch glimpses of Brian Pillman, like, giving him direction. Like, you see him, like, when they have a headlock or whatever, you see him telling him what to do and everything. Um, But then uh, Brian Pillman goes outside, and Alex holds the ropes for him to get it back in when he goes back, you know, doing the, no, like, you know, we're the friendly competition thing. And then Brian Pillman pulls him out by the hair, and he's acting heelish, and the fans love it. The fans love that he's acting like a heel. Um, Granted, it's kind of like his home turf. You know, Dayton, Ohio. He's from Cincinnati, right? But also, he's been he, – dude, he's been in this company since 1989. They keep him start, stop, pushes. People want this guy on top. They want this yes. guy as one of the guys. And it's like, mm-hmm. how long do we have to wait? This guy has been – the guy, this guy has been one of your potential 
top guy since 89, and you're still doing nothing with him. And yeah. all he does is get better. Yeah. So after beating Alex uh, Wright, suplexes Pillman over the top rope from the apron, and then he does a plancha to the floor. But Brian Pillman returns the favor, does a dive of his own, and he gets the crowd super behind him. He starts getting cocky, and then he ends up going for another dive, dive and eats the rail. Uh, There's something that's going to come back to haunt him. After some back and forth, Brian Pillman, he's acting exhausted, and Alex Wright comes off the top rope, but Brian Pillman hits him with a beautiful drop kick. And then Hillman goes up on top, but then Alex Wright sends him crotching onto the top rope because Pillman was posing for the crowd again, once again getting too cocky. Brian Pillman goes for a head scissor, but he doesn't get the full rotation. And then um, Alex Wright sits down on top of Pillman for the cover and for the win. As soon as it's over, fans start booing. But at the end, they do cheer because this match was really good. This was a great opening match, I thought. What did you think? You didn't I like this match? No, I did like this match. Yeah. Okay. Um, I thought this was a great opening match. Uh, Brian Pillman is showing more personality, which is gonna next year is going to be his breakout year as a persona, mm-hmm. as a as a person, but also the year that kind of ruins his life. And, and he, you know, he's dead in two years. <laughs> but uh, he's really... He's really breaking out of shell. What the moment I thought was very interesting is Alex Wright starts fucking up, and Brian yes. Pillman is kind of with him. He's trying to do the surfboard. He doesn't do. It. He does a little move. Then they get back up. Brian and I think this was legit. I I don't think he hit him as hard as it sounds, but I think he did. Brian Pillman smacks the shit out of him. And really? I think what that was was you need to get your shit together because you're making me look bad, and I'm here to get you over. You're not. You got. You got to fucking man up. You gotta fucking because you know at yeah, the time you can see snug. later on there was there was snugness in this match. Yes, absolutely. At, at the time, I think you know they have Alex Wright interacting with Macho Man. I think the plan was eventually like you know ten years from now, two thousand five, Alex Wright's like the top guy. I think that was in their minds. It doesn't mm-hmm. come true. I mean, they give up on it like literally in a few months. But they can tell he's being groomed and <laughs> he's fucking up. And Brian Pillman's probably like. You're fucking up. I got to make you look good. And I think Brian Pillman just gave him a little bit of an extra smack to be like, fucking, let's, you know, let's fucking go, dude. Like, let's, like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking get, get, get this shit right. And, but it's, you know, at the same time, it's also like, you know, it's kind of a little unfair because he, yeah, we both agree he was fucking up in the match, right? Mm -hmm. But he is also, doesn't have that much of years experience. Like, what, what are they, right? Like, it's kind of like a, it's like rock in a hard place, man. You wanna you want him to do well, but it's like he's so new, like how much I know, but I think eventually they did blame him for not doing good. I mean, like we did the math and when WCW shut down, he was still fucking young as fuck. And I think he's still young enough. I think he's younger than Jericho. Like he could still he could go to AEW and wrestle if they wanted him to. I mean, yeah. why not? They have Jeff Jarrett fucking in the main event. Might as well have Alex Wright taking on Evil Uno, Evil Uno the way yeah. it was meant to be. But no, this is a great opener. I had a lot of fun, and I think we're gonna have a good time watching Brian Pillman careen to his death. Uh, yeah. But no, I think like <laughs> he's starting to really. There's a reality where he does because he has that accident which caused him to go on a lot of drugs. Uh, that accident when he first signs with WWE. There's a reality he doesn't have that accident, and he is one of the biggest stars we've ever seen. I think he, whether he was in WCW. I think he would have been a great guy to fight the NWO. Like he's like st- he's like he's like the Dean Ambrose to Sting's like fucking Sting. Like he's like the crazy guy who's like like the NWO doesn't know where he's coming from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He would have been great in that role, or in WWF, he would have been great like as like the corporate the the corporate henchman for Vince and The Rock to fuck with Stone Cold. Yeah, and this is like a good match to watch to see. Like you can see, there's already like some of that inkling of really heelish Brian Pillman. Yeah. Comeback, right? coming together. He's time, coming together, bro. He's finally figuring yeah. it out. Yeah. And this time it's not like with the Hollywood blondes. It's like yeah. his natural heelishness coming out. Right. Well, thing, and it's, I like the blondes, but this feels more like the real him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the blondes too, but everybody also could tell that was like, you know, you're a heel tag team, but this is like, mm-hmm. He, you know, he's showing glimpses and stuff, and it's, it's, uh, and he's more seasoned as a wrestler, so it's, it's, you can you know, see it. It's good. You know what Brian Pillman is like? Brian Pillman is like, 
if CM Punk got into a major car crash in like August 2011. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what would, like, that's like the kind of what if. Like, he was at that level. Like, and then, like, it just didn't happen because the car crash fucked him up mentally and made him go on so many drugs and then we killed him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's too terrible. Getting back to great, uh, what is this fucking paper? Yeah, I already forgot. Getting great American to- Badass, they put it back to you. <laughs> we get a montage of Diamond Dallas Page's arm oh. wrestling gimmick that he's doing. He's the best arm wrestler. Uh, and he gives out open challenges, and the winner will get a date with the Diamond Doll, right? As his wife mm-hmm. in real life. And then they show you a recap where he's doing arm wrestling match with Van Hammer. I forgot he's still with this company. And then mm-hmm. um, his max muscle, his like heavy, he uh, trips up uh, Van Hammer for DDP to win. So you see that DDP is winning by dubious methods. So Mean Gene, he is with the challenger, Dave, your favorite wrestler, Dave Sullivan. Oh, the only person who makes me miss Kevin Sullivan is Dave Sullivan. <laughs> yeah. He's got Ralph the Rabbit with him, and he goes, oh, call me Evad. Get it? Do you get it, Evad? Do you get it? It's it's uh, it's it's Dave backwards, because yes, really, brilliant, brilliant writing. From brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Who needs, yes. who, who needs Vince McMahon and Vince Russo when you have this? Yes. <laughs> um, so we're going to get our um, second, This I guess technically this is the second match. It's an arm wrestling match. Um, it's Diamond Dallas Page with a Diamond Doll and Max Muscle versus Dave Sullivan with Ralph the Rabbit. Uh, there, there, there is an Evad chant to start. The, I mean, I heard it, so I guess it's I heard it too. Over. Sadly, yeah. I guess it's kind of over. So Max Muscle, uh, DDP's Muscle, he's doing this thing where he's like putting his foot behind DDP's foot to give him leverage, but this time Nick Patrick, the referee, he keeps catching him, so Max has to keep like like not helping him out. So DDP is struggling. And then the diamond doll kind of bumps into Max and Max kind of bumps into DDP, which allows Dave Sullivan to win. So he wins a date with the diamond doll. DDP afterwards is angry. So he shoves Max muscle uh, who shoves him back. And then they hug and Max blames the diamond doll. And then Gene Oakland, he is with DDP and DDP is like yelling, Oh, I want to do over. I want to do over. And that's basically the segment. Um, Thoughts? Horrible. Let me tell you something. Before DDP got good, he was very bad. He was like, you know what DDP is? He's like, you know, like when they like um they can't find a real wrestler, but like in a sitcom, they have to have a wrestler, so they just have some like guy acting corny, like, I'm gonna fight you in the ring, and I'm gonna <laughs> brother. Like that's DDP. He's like some cheesy, shitty writer's idea of a pro wrestler right now. He gets good. He gets really good, but I man, not right now, though. just not right now. Not right now. You know when when I when I you know because I was out of wrestling and then I hear that DDP's main eventing a monster with Randy Savage. I was like, wait a minute, what what is happening in WCW that DDP is getting the main events with Macho Man Randy Savage? But he does. He makes it work. He figures it out. He he he's a great example of never giving up because he figures it out. And then Vince McMahon says, "No, you didn't," and buries him. But yeah. you actually get to figure it out. I'm gonna fucking show you who who. Um, but um, man, this was horrible. And Dave Sullivan, man, he is ah uh, just awful. Just this whole thing was awful. This was the low light of the show by far, by far. By the way, uh, if those of you guys want to know, Max Muscle uh would have eventually passed away in 2019 at the age of 56. So yeah, and they're doing like a. Wardlow thing with Max Muscle, but he's not good enough to be Wardlow. He's a little, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the thing with that is that that, like, muscle gimmick, it doesn't, the percentages of that working out is really not that good. Like, I mean, Wardlow didn't work out, you know? Um, yeah. It's hard. It's hard for that muscle gimmick to work out, you know? Well, it's, it's hard, it's, and it's also hard to, like, you know, like I feel like I feel like Max Muscle. I don't know. I we don't watch the weekly show, but I feel like Max Muscle just showed up, and now already he's going to turn on DDP. Like I don't get. Yeah. I, I just I didn't get. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't is, know what they're doing. Is Diesel the only one that worked? 
that it worked where like the muscle eventually comes out of the shadow and... i mean china worked china worked too but that was like china worked too. Yeah, that's but that was also very out of the box and it was a woman and... yeah yeah i can't think of any more really uh, unless mm -hmm. i just don't remember anyways but then again well, china also i mean at the end of the day she doesn't work out because you know who works out is uh, stephanie mcmahon she works out yeah yeah she worked out yeah she didn't even do the muscle gimmick proving that <laughs> muscle gimmick doesn't really work yeah <laughs> so did it work out i don't think it worked out so no diesel's the only one yeah tony shivani and brian uh, uh brian heenan uh brian heenan brian heenan i forgot it bobby the brain heenan oh my god yeah. brian heenan uh they inform us that back uh marcus bagwell is actually on the show but he had to pull out because he's injured and but craig uh, pitbull pillman uh pitman will still wrestle two matches tonight because he already had a match earlier that they're not gonna they didn't show us it. it was on main event right wcw yeah. main event and this is gonna go to our third match which he is in it is um sergeant craig pitman versus bagwell's replacement jim duggan and um <laughs> They're talking about how, like, oh, Craig Pittman, while they're, while they're wrestling, um, Tony Schiavone was talking about how, uh, you know, Brian, you know, they're like, oh, Pittman's a brawler, because he is, you know, he's from the military and everything. And, and, and Tony Schiavone goes, well, you know, Jim Duggan's a brawler, too. He's got cauliflowered ears. And then Brian, uh, or like Bobby the Brain Heenan goes, well, he's also got a cauliflowered face, which I thought was really funny. Um, good stuff by Heenan. Um mm -hmm. The Sarge uh, launches himself during this match, and Jim Duggan ducks and he sends the sergeant flying over the top rope, but he lands on his foot, uh, feet, and then he just takes a bump. Uh, the Wells kind of, I mean, it was kind of cool that he landed on his feet. I don't know if he didn't take a bump. Sergeant gets, uh, however, he's on the outside. He grabs Jim's leg from the inside, and then he rips off his knee pad. He starts slamming the knee into the post, um, and he starts the beatdown process, which gets the fans to start chanting, USA! for Jim Duggan against the guy who served in the U.S. military. So way to go, WCW fans. You you first chant EVAD, and now you're chanting USA for two American guys, proving to me that you guys are the smartest group of fans. They're great. So, they, they, they are the fathers of the AEW fans. So. Yeah, that's true. That is true. They're the precursor. Precursor to mm -hmm. AEW. Uh, the Pitbull tries to do a drop toe hold when Jim Duggan kicks him, kicks off, and I don't know if you caught this, but when he's trying to do the 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 drop toe hold and Jim Duggan kicks off, uh, Pittman does this ridiculous bump. Like he goes like whoa, whoa, and he just like goes flying out the ring. Mm -hmm. Even the commentators have to be like, uh, because it looks so fucking hokey. Jim Duggan hits a three point stance that Sarge does not sell at all. He gets right back up. And he throws on his cold red submission move, but he won't let go even when Jim Duggan grabs the rope. So the ref has to call a DQ. Jim Duggan gets his two by four and he tries to scare off Sergeant Slaughter, but it looks like this few is over. So before we get to you, I got to tell you this. When I was a kid, um, I kind of, I was a fan of Pittman because he is like such an old school, like, He's like a throwback, almost like really like, like kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a, a hokey gimmick, you know. He's like super, mm -hmm. like he's so one dimensional. He's such a one dimensional drill sergeant, right? So I liked him, but man, and he's not bad, but man, some of the selling he does, it's so fucking shitty. It's just like whoa, <laughs> it's just like I too, think, comic yeah. too ridiculous. I think he sucks. I think he stinks. I think this match was a waste of time. This is this this was, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna. You know, if you're, if you're going to try to get this guy over, get this guy over. Just have him win the match. Don't do this thing where he doesn't let go, then Hacksaw Jim Duggan chases him away. Just have him win. Like, they had him beating the shit out of Hacksaw the entire match. Just give him the match. I don't know. I, uh, I wasn't, I'm not, I don't, I've never liked Sergeant Craig Pittman. I kind of feel like he's a waste of time, and this match did not change my mind. Um, I didn't think it was a bad match. So, and I, you know, you know what it was too, but, but I, I really think, the reason why I have to tell you that I was a fan of his, but I don't know why I was, but I was. But the reason why I tell you that is because I think maybe part of the reason why I like this match was because this is the first time I'm seeing him. Yeah, you haven't, right? you haven't seen him yet in this event. Yeah, yet. so it's maybe it's like a nostalgia thing that's making me like it. But um, I have no idea who was such a fan of his when I was growing up. Yeah, but I just I, I, he was, <laughs> he was so one of those weird. guys when I would check in on WCW, he would walk out and I'm just like, oh, this is just 
it's a potential failure, you know? The man had good facials. The man had good facials. He does have good facials. I'll give him <laughs> Yeah, okay. All right. Compromise. Mean Gene Okerlund, speaking of good facials, Mean Gene Okerlund is with, two, uh, with another guy who does good facials. Uh, Steven Regal, one of the members of the Blue Bloods, and he's with there with um, with now, I think it's called... Oh, Lord um, Robert Eaton. Well, yeah, the, uh, the Earl of Eaton, um, Bobby Eaton, I guess, and they're talking, they're supposed to be the Blue Bloods, they're Blue Bloods, and Regal's talking about the nasties, and uh, Gene Okerlund's joking that, hey, Regal, you're taking up too much time. We're not going to get a chance to hear from uh, the Earl of Eaton. And we never do, but that's the whole joke because... Yeah, he Bobby doesn't really talk to the guy. Yeah, Bobby Eaton is not English. He's uh, from Alabama, um, yeah. which I thought was kind of fun. So we get a recap of the main event pre-show where Sherry, um, with the Harlem Heat, they confront Colonel Rob Parker and his uh, Slackjaw tag team. And uh, Parker forces a kiss on Sherry, and then Sherry slugs him, which is going to set up our next match, match number four. We got Bunkhouse Buck, who I can't believe this guy has wrestled in WW pay-per-views for this long. It's been like over a year, right? He's been on these pay-per-views, right? Yeah, yeah. they, they, they really, they really, they, they couldn't get rid of Dustin Rhodes fast enough, but they got this fucking loser still flopping around. Dude, this guy, he's been wrestling on these pay-per-views for, I think, over a year at this point. He's been there for a while. But Buckhouse yeah. Bunk, uh, Bunkhouse Buck and Dick Slater, his new tag team partner with Colonel Rob Parker versus Harlem Heat with Sister Sherry. They all brawl to start with Heat getting most of the edge. Uh, Booker T, by the way, he is the best one out of everybody in this week. He's fucking so smooth the way he pops up in all his moves. Mm -hmm. They all brawl again, and then uh, Parker reverses a cover behind the referee. Um, but Booker T calls for Sherry, and Sherry comes back in. She reverses. Uh, the she re reverses the cover uh, for Booker T to win the match. Um, it wasn't great, but it was quick, so I, I it was okay. It was all right. It, you know, I I didn't like it. I you know I'm at the point now in my life where I see that fucking Buckhouse Bunk walk out, and I'm just like whatever. And Dick Slater is like fucking dollar store Terry Funk. He's yes, not yes, good. Yes, that's a I just, I get it, but, but I'll tell you the highlight of this was Sherry was looking fucking good, man. Yeah, that was a very good description of Dick Slater, a dollar store Terry Funk. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it's like a very, it's like a re you know what you know like how like WCW. One of the reasons why I didn't like WCW when I was a kid was that they had too many gimmicks that were like cheap knockoffs of WWE uh, F gimmicks, yes. right? And that's what Dick Slater is kind of like. It's, it's like a prime example, even though Terry Funk's their guy, you know? Um, yeah, well, he's not there. He's in WCW again while this is happening. But, I mean, he's in ECW. But, yeah, yeah I just thought this match was a waste of time. Uh, I can't wait till Buckhouse Funk gets fired. I want to go back in time and fire him uh, earlier. I mean, he just – he's just one of – you know, like, he's one of those guys when he walks out, you just think to yourself, like, why am I watching this? Like, what am I, I doing He's constantly in the pay per views, but guys like Brian Pillman, are Steve Austin is not yeah, on the pay. -per -view. Steve Austin is not. Pillman is not. Um, who else is there in this company at this point? Like Van Hammer is not. He sh he's just as good as Buck, you know. Yes, and Buck I will, I will like give I will give Buck I will give Van Hammer that. Yeah, and that Buck should be, like that should be his catchphrase. I'm just as good as Buckhouse Buck. <laughs> I'm just as good as Buckhouse Buck, yeah. But also, he has a better look. Like, Buckhouse Buck just has yeah. an awful... But I'm surprised. Man, you don't, if like, I was the, you don't like the Widow's Peak he does? You don't like that Widow's no. Peak here? Everything uh, about it is just, like, shitty 70s Southern wrestling. <laughs> southern wrestling! But it's crazy to me that he's legit on, like, every single pay-per-view. Like, I know. He's, and, he, like, and he's never... He's not, it'd be one thing if he was, like, he looks like shit, but he's a great worker, like Matt Bourne. But he's <laughs> yeah. fucking horrendous. He's, he, yeah. he has nothing to anything. He's a waste of life and a waste of my time. So we got a recap of Vader uh, confronting the commissioner, Nick Bockwinkle, and pushing him away and grabbing Eric Bischoff and saying, I'm tired. I'm tired of all this. And like, and he's shoving around a Nick Bockwinkle as well. And uh, Hulk Hogan comes out and attacks Vader, and they start fighting Tony right. Giovanni and uh, Bobby Heenan. They're with the commissioner, Bockwinkle. And Bockwinkle says, "Vader, you think you're a tough guy because you pick on like the officials and me, like rip my sh suit and everything? That's not a tough guy. A tough guy is a guy who faces Hulk Hogan. And I'm gonna see how tough you are." And 
because you're going to face Hulk Hogan at, and uh, he forgets the name of the pay per view. So yeah. he goes, What's the name of the pay per view? He's doing this whole big speech. Yeah, he goes, yeah. <laughs> he, he, he forgets. He has Bobby Heenan tells him it's uh, Bash the Beach, and he goes, All right, hey, if you think you're such a tough guy, you're going to face Hogan at Bash the Beach in a steel cage. So good, no, set up for next one. We got mm-hmm. Mean Gene Okerlin. He is with Ric Flair. Ric Flair's smiling. He says he's not on top again. Vader's getting another shot. This time, it, there's going to be none of Hogan's friends coming in because it's going to be in a cage. And then Flair turns his attention to Randy Savage. And he goes, Savage, I took your wife in 92. And then I took out your dad. And I'm going to take you out. This was a great promo by Ric Flair. I mean, I loved it, but I also am like, all you're doing is reminding people I should go watch WWE. I liked it, but I also was like, you know, when you do that, it's great because you're like, yeah, I remember that angle. This is so fun good. But also it's like, this is why Vince was like, you're just stealing my shit because it's like, you have to rely on my storylines to get this going. You know? Yeah, there, but damn, man, Ric Flair, when he's on, he could cut a fucking good promo. Oh, it was great promo. Great promo. Yeah, Don't give me a great promo. promo. We're going to go to our fifth match, television uh, title match. We got the Renegade with Jimmy Hart versus the champion Arn Anderson. You know what? If you guys want to know what like the Renegade is like, he's supposed to be the knockoff Ultimate Warrior, right? But it's yeah. you know the thing about the Ultimate Warrior that made him really like one of the one of the things that made him so cool, besides like you know the entrance and all that. Besides being a racist, what else? What? Yes, yeah, so besides the racist, which is cool too. With his face paint, I always did love the the design of the face paint, right? Oh, face paint's great. Yeah, this fucking guy Renegade. If you want, if you look at his face paint, it's basically a red and yellow letter R on one eye, mm-hmm. and it, it looks like he's got fucking ketchup and mustard on his face. It looks so bad. It's like a fucking giant R. It looks, it's terrible, it's terrible face paint. Anyways, in this match, Arn Anderson he tries to attack the Renegade from behind, but Renegade overpowers him. Obviously, he's bigger, and you know he's no selling like the Warrior did. Um, after, but Arn does hit a devastating back elbow, which puts him in control, including bloodying up Renegade in his mouth. Uh, Arn hits a spine buster, but only gets a two count. Renegade fights back, and then he hits a top rope splash to win the title. He wins a television title, and as he's winning and celebrating, they show you the giant, Paul White, standing in the audience in the front row, wearing a leather coat, and he just stares at the Renegade. Um, this once again, it was it wasn't great, but it was quick, and it was not it quick did enough. What it was supposed to do it. it did I, what it know, was supposed the, to do. You know, this is the thing. If you want to really, if you really, okay, we want this guy to be ultimate warrior, right? And I know yeah. why Hogan wanted this guy to be ultimate warrior because yes. Hogan wanted this guy to eventually turn on him, and he pins him, and he gets the win over the ultimate warrior. That's what he wanted, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to make this guy ultimate warrior. Number one. <clears throat> Number one, you just have him win in three seconds. Just have him squash on Anderson and win. The, like, this is the equivalent of what if if Ultimate Warrior had a back and forth match with Honky Tonk Man at SummerSlam 88? He's dead in the water. Nothing ever happens for that guy. You know, we forget about him. He, he becomes like Ted RC or Hercules. But the fact that Warrior squashed him so fast is what helps. And that's number one. Also, the guy can't wrestle. The guy's not good. So have it end fast. The other thing, too, is like he wins the belt and rather than letting the fans like, get, get, be in the moment and let you know, like, hey, this is a guy we're investing in. They cut to the giant, and then it's all about the giant. Why don't you have the giant come out at the beginning of the match, have security tell him to leave, and then you focus on the match, and then when he wins, you can fo- you can have the whole moment for Renegade. Instead, it's like you automatically, like, fuck Renegade, who gives a shit? We got to get over Hogan, Hogan's next opponent. Good point. That is a fair point. Mm-hmm. Um, We got a montage. Of the Nasty Boys and Blue Bloods feud. Uh, mean Gene Oakland, he's with the Nasty Boys, and they give a very anti English promo. I was a borderline racist promo, right? I was like, Jesus. Um, we're going to match number six for the tag titles the Blue Bloods versus the Nasty Boys. Uh, they opens with everybody just brawling. Uh, it, it, they brawl to the floor, and um, uh, what do you call it? The Blue Bloods, both, each member eats. Uh, you know, the what is that thing called though? Um, the pit stop. The pit stop. They both eat pit stop. Oh, the underarm move. Yeah. yeah. What would you let me ask you a question? 
what would you rather not what would you want to take the least the pit stop the stink face or joey ryan's like lollipop out of the trunks you keep asking me these questions i'll take the uh, the least thing is joey ryan's thing out of the trunk really yeah 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 actually yeah yeah everybody hates that the most it's like that's well, also just... like now we know joey ryan's such a piece of shit at least rikishi like everybody like rikishi so i think the reason why also people like what is what is like rikishi's not like a fucking scumbag like joey ryan was dude do you, do you remember dude i fuck this is why i don't i hate wrestling fans this is why i hate do you remember dave Meltzer and and there was a guy who worked with conrad toms i got into a five other on twitter back in 2018 they were saying that Joey Ryan is penis thing is just like the Undertaker, and if you don't like it, you're out of touch. <laughs> like that's what they were fighting. We and I'm like, no, it's stupid. I do remember. <laughs> they were like arguing, and the only reason they were doing that is uh, because the oh people they approve of, like the Bucks and Cody, were uh, having Ryan's back at the time. But they were like, Joey Ryan is just like the Undertaker, like the pen, the thing where the penis like penis is up. And if you don't like it, you're just an out of touch old man. You're not in touch with kids. What like, they were arguing like kids, like this is like for you. What are you talking about? Like, like the fucking stupid. And Dave Meltzer was the same way. You're out of touch if you don't like the, the Joey Ryan penis shit. You're just no, out of touch. that's why it's Dave Meltzer, man. If you are listening to this, and if you listen to Dave Meltzer, and if you actually put weight in what he says, I don't think your wrestling opinion is probably is a good one. I, I think if you were. Is- like if I you were telling me how great Joey Ryan was in 2019, you should not be allowed to be a wrestling fan. You don't know anything about wrestling. And comparing was, him to the he Undertaker... Over, he was over. What? He was over. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck that he was over. It was awful. And, like, comparing him to the Undertaker, you can maybe compare him to, like, Eugene or Bastion Booger. Comparing him to the Undertaker <laughs> as, like, it's the same thing. What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> Joey Ryan is, like... <laughs> <laughs> he's like a better he's like, a, they're like, they're like well if you can accept Undertaker being burned alive why can't you accept the Joy Ryan's penis like knock people out like shut the fuck up shut yeah. the fuck up because you can do Undertaker coming out of a burning building anywhere you can't do the penis thing you can't and meanwhile the guy turned out was like creeping on women the entire time these fucking morons I, the fuck, these fucking, it's the same guys who sit here and say how great AEW's doing now even though no one's going to the fucking show and no one's watching, but actually it's really fucking great. So fuck them. All right, let's yeah. keep going. going back to this match, Brian Nobbs, he uh, drops them. This, this is like a brawl because it's a nasty boys match and Brian Nobbs in the aisle. Like he, te- he drops Bobby in on a chair and the nasties are in control until um, Brian Nobbs back in the ring. He spills onto the floor. And then uh, he gets beat on some more. Then uh, Sags regains control when he tags in until Regal throws him out of the ring as well. And then um, the Blue Bloods are in control. Then Sherry and Stevie Ray, they run down and they get on the apron. It distracts the referee and Jerry Sags. And while they're distracted, Booker T comes in through the audience and he hits the top rope Harlem hangover on Brian Knobs. And he... He tries to rush out of the ring, but while he's doing that, Bobby Ian, who's on the top rope trying to hit this Alabama slam, Alabama jam, I'm sorry, um, he gets tripped up by Booker T and he falls off the top rope onto the mat hard, which allows Sags to get up on the top rope and hit an elbow drop on Bobby Ian for Knobs to cover and win the match. Um, I like this because this is like a good setup of this three-way tag team feud that they're kind of setting up between Harlem Heat, the Blue Bloods, and the Nasty Boys. And, uh, you know, it's good. Good seeing Bobby Eaton back. I, I like this. What, I, what did you think? I like this match a lot. Um, the, the two teams meshed well. Uh, again, you give the Nasty Boys a role, and they do it. And William Regal's the same way. You When you tell William Regal to, to, to act like an idiot, he's going to be the best idiot you've ever seen. Yeah. Because all four of these men are supremely talented in their own ways. They know their role. They know what they're doing. And as such... It's the second best match on the show for me. I love this match. It was great. Um, Man, the Nasty Boys continue to impress. If you have gone your whole life thinking Nasty Boys are not good workers, I know there's some of you out there because you've been listening to the fucking scumbags on the internet. Go back, rewatch all the shit they did from 93 to today, to 95 to today. You know, tonight to the Great American. And you're going to be like, wow, these fucking guys, you know, listen, they're, they're not trying they're not trying to be Shawn Michaels. They're trying to be the nasty boys. And you know what? It's true what they say. They're nasty as they want to be. And that's yeah. why they always steal the show. 
Uh, I was always a fan. Yeah. We got a U.S. title tournament recap. And uh, it includes, uh, you know what? Actually, I got to look this up. Actually, I'm glad I wrote it down. In the U.S. tournament recap, there actually is a Randy Savage, Steve Austin match. Yeah, it's on the Randy I mean, Savage DVD they put out a few years ago. I got to watch it. I, I heard oh, it's, I not, it's, watch it's not like basically a squash. Basically a squash. Oh, it's a squash. That's too bad. But I, I didn't know those two touch gloves like that. I was like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mean Gene, he is with uh, Meng and Colonel Rob Parker. Uh, who cuts a very southern promo on Sting, and he's also very hot and sweaty, which I, I always find it so funny. And he's always so hot and sweaty. I love that. Oh, I love Google that. It, Google it. Yeah, he's I love really that southern man, the southern gentleman uh, who's sweaty and he's always wearing a white suit. I love that stereotype. It's just so. Do you can't say wrestling? See, wrestling is racist, but they're racist to everybody. Like everybody's yeah. a stereotype. So Everyone's just, a stereotype. Everyone's a stereotype. I fucking love it. Um, mean Gene Okerlin, uh, he talks to Sting and about uh, paying your dues and being champion. And he goes, I paid my dues. I've been here since like, you know, day one. And I know what it's like to be champion. And Meng, you don't. You just got here. You don't know what it's like to be champion. You're not prepared. And we're going to go to our seventh match. It is the U.S. T- uh, tournament finals. We got Meng with Colonel Parker versus Sting. Meng beats on Sting early. Meng Sting. Goes, Meng and Sting. Meng beats on Sting early. <laughs> and it goes back and forth, back and forth, and Sting. But Sting can't knock Meng off his feet. That's the whole thing. That's the whole storyline. He's like, I can, I can hit, and I can fucking knock him back a few, but he can't fall off his feet. And then Colonel Parker also gets some licks on Sting when the referee's not looking, and Sting's... uh. Stings on the ropes by uh, Bang's beatings. Like he's just like getting beat up, but typical Sting, he starts firing back, firing back. And he finally takes Meng off his feet using a flying clothesline. Crowd pops for that. They both go over the top rope, however, and they're on the floor. And then Sting, remembering Colonel Parker beating on him, starts attacking Colonel Parker. And Ming tries to go from behind to attack Sting. But Sting moves out of the way, and Ming goes headfirst into the ring post. Um, and back in the ring, Sting puts on the Scorpion Deathlock on Meng. But Ming, even though his head had hit the post and everything, he still powers out of the Deathlock, which people are shocked because at this point, people don't usually power out of the Scorpion mm-hmm. Death. But Ming did it. People were like, "Holy shit!" Uh. Sting hits him with a top rope splash, and Ming still kicks out of that. And people are like, holy shit. But then Sting hits a dump, uh, a big jumping DDT on Ming. Ming is just too exhausted. He cannot kick out of this. Sting wins the U.S. title. This was a fantastic match. This is pretty good, especially for Ming. He's not known for his great matches, obviously, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was a pretty good match, and it just goes to show if you treat someone like a big deal, Yes. Uh, it pays off in the long run. Uh, I really yeah. enjoyed this match. That's the thing. Ming has never been an amazing, like, worker. But the thing is, like, if you, like you said, if you just build him like he's something meaningful, if when you beat him, it, it, it makes the match better, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you, if you just are like, you know, I don't know. And, and they, they, they eventually stop doing it. They eventually, like, are just like, yeah, this guy sucks. And they, they move away from it. But, I mean, it was really well done. I thought this this match. It was a lot of fun. Sting had to do, Sting had to do everything, and he still couldn't even put him away with his big moves. Like that made it like so. Like holy crap, this is a fight, you know. And and here's the thing. Here's the thing with Sting is that he is really doing Hulk Hogan better than Hulk Hogan right now. He did it with Big Baba. He's doing point. it with Ming. He's having these matches with these '80s WDF guys that Hogan used to have, and Hogan seemingly kind of forgot. And again, every single time I see Sting on these shows, it's very clear that he's the guy. He should be given the ball. He should be getting the main events. And, you know, they really, they, you know, they really fucked up with Sting. I mean, you could talk about they did how how great the NWO was and this, that, and the third, and Dave Mel and Dave Mel, Tony, Tony Khan, what's his name? Eric Bischoff can blow himself out all that. But like at this at the end of the day, it's like. Yeah, but you could have had something big with Sting, and you fucking, uh, you know, you know, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, that's that's right. Eric Bischoff really didn't know sometimes. All right, so we get uh, before we get to the uh, main event, we do see uh, 
they show you Billy Ray Helms, who won the Father's Day lookalike contest because he looks like Bubba Rogers. That was and great. That was good. That was a good thing. I mean, it's, to be fair, it's an easy costume to play off, right? I know, but like they set up the con- they set up the the contest. Who's gonna look like Macho Man or Vader? If you're dealing like Vader, bring him to the fucking hospital. It would have been great if somebody looked like the master of dungeon, you know, the dungeon master. <laughs> hey, I'm here with my son. Yeah, I would Happy Father's Day to me. Um <laughs> that... <laughs> they do a recap, a history package of uh Randy Savage and Ric Flair, including Savage schooling Alex Wright on promos, where because Alex Wright was in the tournament and he made he Savage caused him the victory and he starts like cutting a promo on Alex Wright, like I know you're hot, but I need to win. If you got a problem with me, you're like that was a great was, little that was a great little promo. That was a that great was, little promo. That was Savage schooling Alex Wright on how promos are done. It was beautiful. Oh, and, but I really I I was like, they should have done more with these two, man. Like they should like yeah. you know the way to get these guys over is that they, is to have stuff like that where they interact with one another. Yeah. Yeah, and it also made sense because like Savage cost him, so he has to. Yeah, so he's explaining it to him. You have a problem with me on this, but I know you have a dad, and I have a dad, and you know, and I and I fucked, uh, I fucked um, Triple H's wife, so we need to like work together. By the way, this was a great, another great WCW video package, right? That recap. They're getting better. They're getting getting better. better. This is like the third one we're seeing on the show, and they're all really just. It, if you you know what it is, if you did not watch the paper, if you did not watch the shows and you just turn on this pay per view, because it is video package, you know everything that's at stake. You you understand what's going on, you know. Mm-hmm. And it took like a matter of like what a minute maybe. Yeah, right? it was perfect. It's fucking great. Mean Gene Okerlund after the promo uh, video, he is with Randy Savage, who says happy birthday to his father who got attacked by Ric Flair, and he says I'm gonna get Ric Flair tonight. We're gonna go to our main event, Ric Flair. Who comes out with his Titan Tron or mini Titan Tron showing the Turner Tron? I think they used to call him the Turner Tron. The Turner Tron, yeah. Ric Flair comes out with the Turner Tron just showing uh, a, on loop Ric Flair beating up Randy Savage's dad, which I thought was. I thought that was good. That was excellent, right? And I remember it's Father's Day, and mm-hmm. um, he's going to be facing Randy Savage, who does come out with his father, uh, who's got a cane. He comes out with a cane because Ric Flair beat him. So uh, Ric Flair uh, gets chased by Randy Savage to start. Randy Savage eventually gets Ric Flair, and he just starts beating on him, including an axe handle from the top of the ropes to the floor. But Flair gets control, and he starts beating on Randy Savage on the floor. Flair gets um, beat on by Randy Savage some more. So Flair can't take it anymore, so he runs, and he puts his hands on Angelo is uh, Savage's father, and it distracts Randy Savage, which allows Flair to get the advantage on Savage again. This time, Flair's going to do his old tricks, and he's going to really work on Randy Savage's left leg. Mm-hmm. Randy has blood on his face, um, and he's struggling, but he finally starts getting control again, and he brings a bell into the ring, but the referee takes the bell away, and Randy goes up to the top rope, and he jumps off, but this time, instead of hitting... Ric Flair, he eats the guardrail when Rick, uh, Ric Flair moves out of the way. While Randy is down, Ric Flair turns his attention to Angelo, and he knocks him down, and Flair takes uh, Angelo's cane, and he goes into the ring while Randy Savage and the referee check on Randy's dad. Randy gets back into the ring, and as he gets in the ring, Ric Flair hits him in the face with the cane, and then he covers the Randy Savage has fallen down and the referee counts one, two, three. Ric Flair wins. This was this was good. I liked it. I liked it. It was good. I will say that Savage has a lot of intensity in his promos, a lot of intensity. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel the intensity in the match was the level it should have been, considering that he brought up fucking Elizabeth and he beat the shit out of the guy's dad and then bragged about it. I feel like Machman should have been a little bit more out of control. The match, though, if you just put aside the dance stuff, you just treat this as a regular match between these two young men. Um, the match was very, very good. It was really good. And I think these two guys were trying to make a statement that we don't need Hogan. And, you know, Hogan, like Hogan's holding us back. And when we are left to our own devices, we can sell a pay-per-view and we can fucking put on a great main event. And the, and also and also Savage was being and I'll do business. I'll actually put Flair over as a threat again, because for a year Flair's made to look like an idiot by Hulk Hogan yeah. until yeah. Savage allowed him to fuck up his dad, so Ric Flair could get some type of fucking heel heat back. Uh, I really did like the match, but 
I have to say Sting Ming was better, and Alex Wright, Brian Pillman, and even I also think the Nasty Boys and uh, the Blue Bloods was better. I yeah, just no, thought no. Savage could add a little bit more, a little bit, little bit more of a street fight brawl aspect to it. I would have appreciated it. Yeah, that's true. But you already, I would say, more than half, like a little more than half the matches on the show are good. And the ending, the last match, is a good match. So it doesn't leave you with a bad taste in your mouth. The paper. No, so, no, no. You're right. You know, you know what? The more I think about this show, there were yeah. more good matches. But it's just that the bad matches were so bad. And, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah. Some of the some of the bad stuff wasn't great. But you know what? They were quick. They were always quick. That was a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like the old days we'd have these tag tournaments that the match would yeah. go like fucking 50 minutes and nothing would happen. So, look, if you want some old school WCW, I think this show is the way to go. What do you think, Andrew? Mm-hmm. Really yeah, it's not like anything like you, nothing on this show is must see, but it's like if you want to see. Uh, if you're a big a fun, main fan. Yeah, if you want to see a fun WCW pay per view from the mid 90s, this one is it, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, so let's review the next four weeks. Next week, we got King of the Ring 95. It's Diesel mm-hmm. and Bam Bam versus wow. Sinna Tatanka. Mm-hmm. In two weeks, Bash at the Beach 95. It's Hogan Vader in the cage. In three weeks, In Your House 2, Sid mm-hmm. Diesel in a lumberjack match. And in four weeks, it is Collision in Korea, Ric Flair versus Antonio Noki for your leader, Kim Jong-un. What are you, what are you excited about? Collision in Korea because I'm Japanese. I really want to see that. I heard you training stuff. That's fair. Same thing, bro. Same thing. Hey, bro. <laughs> no, um, I heard that's a bad show, but it's a hist- it's certainly a historic show. Be a lot to talk about. Um, should be interesting to review, nonetheless. It's on YouTube if anybody wants to get ready, and it's free, so you can go watch it on YouTube. It's only a two hour show. It's 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 an it's an it was two days, but they edited it down to like a highlight pay per view. By the way. Here's the big problem, though. Sonny Ono does color commentary on it because he's Asian. So, you know. Oh, my God. Are you, is he the English commentary? Yeah, it's him and Bischoff doing commentary. He's and not tonight, I think tonight. He's not like, 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 ha, ha. <laughs> like, you know, he's he, not... he does kind of, he does, though, kind of talk up like Korea and Japan are the same. Like, he talks about like how great Korea is. Like, it's implied that, like, if you, uh, if you're Asian, you all have the same country and you all like support the same thing. So like, oh, he does. I, will, kind of... I don't mind that as much as like I was worried that he's gonna be like doing the whole accent the whole time. He no, doesn't... no, no. But I heard his commentary is like fucking dreadful. But, but listen, we got we got a long road to get to that, brother. Yeah. We got a we got a King of the Ring tournament to get through first. All right, guys, if you like the show, please subscribe. Goose is wrestling pod on iTunes. Leave a review. Please leave us a few reviews. Let's get let's get the let's get the viewership up. Um, so follow us, Goots is Wrestling Pod on Instagram, Ray Goots on Instagram, Andrew Sonali on Instagram. I'm Ray Goots Comedy on TikTok, and please give a subscription on the YouTube channel as well. Leave a leave a comment. What you like? Did you did you enjoy this show? Do you, do you like this show? Do you, do you do you love Tony Khan? Let us know. Yeah. All right. So that's it for this week. We will see you next week. For the King of the Ring, Daddy. Woo! See you then. Yeah.